YouTube. I was getting bored, so I decided I would unbox this amazing creation. It's new to us, it's new to you, it's new to everybody, and I think it's gonna be pretty amazing. But, oh my goodness, it's another Avanti! This time it's a 50 millimeter Avanti from Arrows. Okay, Arrows. We're gonna open it up right now, show you what it's got, if it's worth getting. And if you wanna get one, follow the links in the video description below. You can buy your own. If you don't like it, you can look at a bigger one. And if you don't like this, but you like the other 50 millimeters from Arrows, we've done all of them, I think, mm -hmm. right? I think so. And they've all been really good in their own rights. So this one looks like it's gonna be 640 millimeters wingspan, uh, length is 750 millimeters. It's about 460 grams. Motor size is 26, 27, 4,500 kV, good Lord. Uh, the ESC is a 30 amp, so it's just like the other ones we've seen. So it'll probably handle a 4S, even though it's not technically supposed to. And uh, looks like it uses a 3S, 1300, 30C. So we will immediately break that rule um, after we show it in its regular configuration. Okay, so packaging looks fine. Nothing too crazy yet. What we do here on Brian Phillips RC is we open these things up, we set them up with the radio, and we get them set up with our classic sort of standard configuration, and then we show what we like about it, what we don't like about it, whether it's worth buying, if it's got enough reinforcement, if it's got enough stiffness. Sometimes we hold these planes up to the light so we can see that there is a reinforcement right there. Outboard ailerons. I like that. I don't like that there's not inboard flaps, but at the same time, you could add them if you really wanted to. I like the color match. That's a really good color match. Although being that this is a belly lander, that's gonna wanna rip off of there. Okay. I like that there's protectors over the servos. I like that we have a reinforcement here where we're gonna grab for a hand launch. Okay. That wing feels weirdly balanced. It's pretty cool. Ooh, I like that these are separate. So if you wanted to set up flap rounds, you could technically do it. Although I don't think I'm gonna set up flap rounds on this plane. Here's why I'm not gonna set up flap rounds on this plane. Okay, A, I might, but I'm probably not going to. But B, um, it would be a lot better to have inboard flaps on this anyway. And you could make some monster flaps, but C, I don't really need to slow down a belly lander that much. Yeah. Because you can just bring it in and flare. It's not gonna be that big a deal. Although our other bigger Avanti, which is parked underneath that F-15 right now, mm -hmm. that is a 70, which acts like an 80 because it's a really good one. But that being said, I'm just gonna say, comparatively speaking, they did wrap. Okay, I'm gonna show you this. They did wrap this control linkage here. But comparatively, this thing is gonna be hopefully not quite as tip stally because that was a heavy plane. Really, really high wing loading. Man, this looks good. I love the colors they used. Mm -hmm. I like the way it looks. It's really clean, good jig work, tight, tight tape lines it almost looks like. Ooh, this is actually a decal. The black is a decal, wow. okay? The silver looks cool, although it's kind of blends into the white. Some of you are gonna want it to be a full painted body, but I really, I don't care. In this know. size class and no. price range, that's pretty. Uncommon. Is this accessible or is it glued? I can't tell. Oh yeah. Oh no. That was glued. That was glued. Okay, so there's your motor. So it's an Arrows motor. 26, 27, 4,500 KV. Mm, it looks pretty good. It's got an outrunner and then you can see the fan there. Now I do need to fix this. So let's just do this right now so it can be dry because we're gonna try to fly in a little bit. If you guys don't know how to fix something like this, don't worry, you'll need to, okay? This is some China glue. What are you, oh, the magnet came off. The magnet came okay. off. Okay. So guys, you see what I'm talking yeah. about? I just wanna get some glue working on it because then it'll just stick and we won't have to worry about it ever again. Um, and if you ever have a magnet in place like that, that's the perfect place to leave it. Just leave it there, okay? Mm -hmm. Put a little bit of China glue in there. Now, if you don't know what China glue is, this is China glue. And they used China glue on here from the start, it looks like. Probably what happened is they got a little bit of China glue between the joint, as you can see, I just did. I'm gonna lay this down that way so the China glue's up, 
okay? This stuff is basically like rubber cement in a tube and it comes out clear and it usually dries clear. The foam to foam is exactly the same type of stuff, but this actually has warning labels because it's made in the European Union, okay? This is made in the UK. This stuff is good. It comes in a bigger bottle than this stuff. This, this, this is an FMS offering. Um, nothing wrong with either of them. They both work really good. Uh, they both have aluminized tubes, which tend to, when you squeeze, they hold their shape so it poops out a little more than you want most of the time. So I always like to have a Q-tip handy. And you'll notice I'm blabbing about this now and it's sort of weird in an unbox, but the truth is I need to let this stuff cook off for a minute because it'll get real tacky. So I'm just spreading that on the top and that's getting close enough to where it's probably good enough. But then you can see what's gonna happen is, oh yeah, it's starting to get really tacky. But if you're wanting to speed up the process, you can actually bring air to the equation by doing that. Get up there real close, not moving. Use that moment. See this? Now it's sticky, okay? So now that that's sticky, we can actually just drop this right back into position. Now normally, when you have a magnet like this, you wanna get it in position, glue it, and then leave it. But in our case, we want this to get good purchase, so I'm gonna see if after a second I can lift it off. See? Now watch this, in a second I'm gonna lift it off again. See? Now in a second I'm gonna lift it off again and see. Ooh, it's starting to get it. See how it's lifting the magnet? While that stuff is still kind of juicy a little bit. See, it's just like they got that thing glued together, I think is what happened. Yep, that's totally what happened, guys. But I wanted to show how this works, and I apologize because I ended up screwing the pooch a little bit on that one. But you see what happened, guys? This magnet got glued together. Okay, that doesn't often happen. But this is what we do on Brian Phillips RC. Now they're separate. Okay. So if you ever get a magnet, and people oftentimes will talk about these magnets like, oh yeah, just add a magnetic hatch. It's actually kind of hard to do it myself. I've tried a number of times. Very easy for that to happen. And so when I see these manufacturers do it, there's another trick you can do, and that is to take some clear tape and actually tape it into position, apply the closure, and then like rubber band the enclosure together. But sometimes that little differential between the tape thickness will actually make a gap. So you don't want a gap, you want this to be tight. So anyway, let's keep going. My apologies guys, I didn't mean to take this huge diversion. We do that sometimes on Brian Phillips RC. But honestly, to, you know, a lot of the other channels aren't gonna show you stuff like this. They're just gonna be like, wow, what an amazing plane. We didn't have any problems except for rebuilding it. <laughs> Truth is, like this stuff comes up. And if you're in this hobby, I don't care what manufacturer made this, it's gonna happen from yeah. time to time. So it's actually nothing against arrows here. Okay, so I've got that stuff spread out a little bit. And by the way, this stuff is awesome because like we can set this up and then like 20 minutes later we're ready to start flying. Haha, <laughs> 20 minutes. <laughs> that was a joke, guys. 20 minutes would be like if you were doing it yourself and not yeah. filming with me talking. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna, see, I got a little bit too much in there. So I'm just gonna peel that out of there. And I know you guys are probably thinking to yourself, you know, Brian, we know how to use glue. Yes, I know you do. But what I'm saying is there's some poor schlub that hasn't ever had the opportunity to work with China glue. And China glue is different. It's the special, most bestest glue ever. Just gonna say, so I'm gonna save that for later. You're good. Yeah, I know, because we have a lot of Q-tips around here. Those are getting pricey. So the biggest thing is when you do this China glue, you wanna let it cook, okay? If you don't let it cook, it won't work. Okay. And I mean, it'll, it'll glue, but it just, it's not going to be, it's not going to hold its position. Okay. So now watch this. It hasn't cooked very long. So now all I have to do is just basically close this tight. Okay. And we should be good to go. And, and to be honest with you, I'm just going to leave that now for a minute. We'll come back to it because I feel like it's got a good closure. And you see this gap, there's a little bit of a drop down. So that means we're tight as we need to be. Okay. So we'll come back to that. Yeah, it's a little bit of a bummer, but uh, not a big deal. We work through that stuff all the time at Brian Phillips RC. Doesn't matter if it's a $700 plane or a $200 plane. We see it in all the manufacturing from time to time. Okay, so we have a horizontal stabilizer here, uh, split elevator, okay. Looks pretty simple. Do not have to put our control horns in. Nice silver decals, looks like vinyl. Oh, and we're gonna need some more China glue, it looks like, because that's gonna have to get glued on anyway. 
Uh, and then we have, it looks like some screws. Very, yeah. very tiny looks nuts. pretty sack. simple. There's the no nuts in there, camera crew. Oh, bummer. Sorry to disappoint. Uh, but yeah, so we had a slightly folded manual. Usually I'd freak out about that, but honestly, I'm feeling like they did the best they could because you can't box. mount that to the back of the box because that's an open back box, which we get from time to time. And I actually like these boxes better because like in our case, we have like millions of these things. Oh, and here you go. Here's your dimensions if you want to see that. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. And 11 bladed EDF fan. So this is going to be a <laughs> look at the piece count. One, two, three. If you count the nut sack, bolt, nut and bolt sack, That's um, crazy. then we're actually talking four pieces. Pretty, pretty good. My favorite. Low piece count. Okay, so let's go ahead and build this. Now, there's four screws, so they probably gave us one extra, right? Um, one, two, three, four, five, yep. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my many, 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 many screwdrivers Those here. Those are Phillips. Phillips? Yep. Come on, man. Just for you. Yep, they were like, Brian Phillips will do the review, so we need to put Phillips screws in. <laughs> Pretty sure they didn't think about that at all. <laughs> Said no one ever. All right, here we go. All right, guys, this build's gonna be easy, but we do have to do it. So because we're waiting for that glue to dry, I think it's a good time to go ahead and get, get at it and see if it stuck. I'm licking my fingers, grossed out, yes. Ooh, see? This is just gonna be one of those things. Mm -hmm. That's very frustrating. Now, if, if it continues to behave badly like that, I'll have to pull it out, put tape between, and I'll tape the face of it so it wraps on top of the silver on both sides. Okay, why don't we just do that right now? Goodness gracious. But Come on, man. But you're not gonna need to get in there, right? <sighs> yeah, and I mean, I understand what you're saying and it's not untrue. It's just more a matter of, as soon as we don't think we're gonna need in there, guess what we're gonna need in there? There. Right. Watch this. <laughs> Well, I know. We were almost <laughs> we out, of out of Ziploc bags. Bag. We only have 10,000. I can't believe you did that. I know, it's like a miracle. So these are accommodations of a long, 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 long life of suffering for my wife <laughs> um, because she's married to me. <laughs> okay, that sack is there. All right, so this is, this is gonna be the repair of the day, guys. We have to do the in, important surgery of the day. Brian Phillips surgery. Okay, what are we doing on the surgery ops today? The patient came in a box. Why are we doing surgery on him? Is he already gone? Just, yeah. All right, so I'm gonna just slide this magnet toward me, which is funny because the first one I, I glued is actually good now. Okay, so I'm just gonna stick that down. It is quite sticky. It's probably gonna be okay. I don't think we have a problem, but I'm gonna, as usual, overkill it. Yes. Beat okay. the dead horse. Kids, I love horses, just in case you're wondering. Um, we don't have any horses, but we could have horses. So there's no kids watching this. There's no kids. We know who you are. We know who you are. We know all about you. Thank you, Google. <laughs> Just kidding. We don't, but Google does. Praise Google. We have to say that three times in each video now. <laughs> it's, it's, it's all part of the, part of the contract. <laughs> Google is so good, they don't spy on you at all. <laughs> Okay, now it's taped down. Okay, let's see if this works. Guys, this is like try number seven. I think people are gonna lose faith in Brian Phillips RC if this doesn't work. I am rubbing the boogers off of this. Yes, that is a booger. Mmm, mmm. <laughs> just kidding, I'm sorry, I just had to eat it quick. <laughs> ah! Did you see? We're blowing speakers early today. Yeah, we're not even to the flight portion. See, it's trying, it's trying to pull it out. So can you just let them both dry? Let Are you saying if I let glue dry that it won't pull off of the surface? Just a thought. Oh, goodness gracious. That is pretty presumptuous of you. Now, the other thing is I kind of noticed that this, yeah, that's definitely wrong. That's right. Okay, so my idea is keep them separate. Your idea was let, keep them separate? Yeah, yes, obviously <laughs> it was my idea. Um, we'll leave them separate so that the glue can dry and then we'll just put this over here um, And that'll that'll solve all the problems <laughs> that the model has Okay, so now the next move is we're gonna go ahead and glue the tail on guys If you're wondering why this video took longer than five minutes because it's a five-minute build according to the manual or whatever they said 
It said, it's actually, it's, you know, the Chinese are getting a little aggressive with their marketing. Um, it's actually comes fully assembled now. That's, it comes fully assembled. No assembly required. It's kind of like the dancing wings, three right. hour builds. Right. Or, or 20 minute builds. Is it builds. like 20 minutes? Yeah, it's like we spend like 27 hours yeah. on it. It takes 20 minutes to take it out of the box. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, it takes 27 minutes just to cut all the seams on the tape. Okay, so there we go, guys. We got a little bit, a little slather of goodness. Now, you, you're probably thinking to yourself, you're like, Brian, you know, how do you decide how much glue to do here? And, and this is, what I do is I take out a measuring tape and then I put it away and then I get my scale and then I put that away and then I squeeze it out until I'm happy. It's pretty, it's much, pretty much how I do it. Probably a little more than you needed, but. Well, no, I gotta spread it's it out. It's kind of a tight fit in there, so you gotta like. Yeah, I know, I gotta do it while over. it's wet. I gotta, okay. Listen, I gotta cram it in while it's wet. Okay. If I cram it in while it's dry, then there's lots of disappointment and frustration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just okay, saying. So we're just gonna put that there. And listen, listen, I wanna get some glue on here, but I don't wanna go nuts on it. Eh, I'm probably gonna have to put more on there. <sighs> what did you do? <laughs> Try to reuse that Q-tip. That Q-tip is important to me. So FMS glue, you're helping us win battles today let me tell you so much glue you listen, have glue on the other side listen you have to glue both surfaces this is I, this is a horizontal stabilizer it's not a 1700 millimeter plane i know i don't want it to fall off serious it'd be Seriously. an interesting video well I'm you don't need an elevator anyway yeah ian says a well-trimmed <laughs> Sail ship doesn't. Jet. Yeah, that's right. You don't need. You don't need. If you guys don't know the inside joke, I, I bought an airplane from this guy named Ian. If you've heard it forty-seven times, just just 40, 48 times, not going to make the difference. I promise. Um, anyway, so he sold me this plane, and, and the guy met me at the uh, casino parking lot. So I hope he didn't like spend it all inside. But either way, it was. Um, you could tell the guy was like really, really moved by this plane. It was a really good plane, and he was practically crying. I, I think he. He got out of his truck or his car or whatever it was, his little Toyota thing, and you know, it was I could see he had been, you know, like his tears were on his face and he was <laughs> kinda like all blush and I was like, you know, dude, I mean you must have really liked this plane, sir. He he did. Brian, you don't need that you don't need elevators. Yeah, you know, and a well trimmed sailplane. <laughs> not Which, the way he talked. Yeah, he kinda did talk did like he? that. Yeah. Yeah. It was not there. No, the it casino. wasn't that bad. No, Ian was good. And he he's a really good pilot too. Like better than I'll ever be. In three lifetimes. He was that good. He was that good? He was, well, he didn't need an elevator for well, that's true. I mean, he's that's a really true. good Great. pilot. He was like Denzel Washington in airplane. You know, he's like <laughs> flying upside down, only a few drugs used. And right. he was able to, you know, without an elevator, just get it right down to the ground. This is, that was, Way harder than it should have been. It was not. <laughs> Just kidding. By the way, reinforced here, um, in case you land backward. Oh, well, sometimes yeah, so you like drag your tip. Well, I mean, it's more of like a, you know, drag it on, on takeoff. But are you gonna be taking off with your wheels? Yes. Like, hold on, hold on, I didn't quite get it off the ground. If you got glue on my chair, I can't say I didn't. <laughs> Oops. No chairs were harmed in the filming of this video. Okay. All right. Uh, getting back to the point, uh, we are going to stick this into there, I think. Do, do, do. There it is. Oh, wow. That was actually pretty easy. This, this guys, all joking aside, this is an easy build. Um, it would have taken half the time if it was any other human building it. Mm -hmm. But uh, Maybe I'm gonna get it done right. Look here. Right. I'm gonna get it done right. <laughs> Phillips, look at this. They must have designed this plane just, just because of my us. review. Here it is. Oh yeah. Wowzers. Whew. That's I can feel it in there. It's pretty great. We're gonna go like this. You know why we get this out of our system? <laughs> we have to worry about Jason getting rent. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I can't tell that inside story, guys. Put it on your tip. And then drop it on the ground. Drop it on the ground. Okay, I'm gonna show you a trick, trick of the day. Use your finger 
And if you have a fingernail, like a girly fingernail, it'd be better, but I have kind of like a boyish fingernail. <laughs> Hold that, stick it in there, and then just start screwing away. They weren't longer and shorter. No, they're all the same length, no. guys. That is like gotta be one of the easiest builds we've ever done. I had to do a massive engine job on this plane. <laughs> so for those of you that are just watching for the first time, I apologize. Second of all, you know, you've missed a lot. We're only like 2000 videos deep. And if you like this plane and you're like, you know, I like that plane, but I wish I could just see one bigger, you know? Well, there's one over there on the ground. Mm -hmm. Here, I'll go show it to him while you're screaming yeah. yourself over there. Not doing that on this camera one. this time again. Let's yeah, that's the there. Avanti. That's the Avanti. That's a 70, uh, right? That's an FMS though. Huh? Yes. <laughs> Where did it burn? Um, just, uh, gonna what? stick this stuff. Hey, what listen, the copy, the closed captions can't pick up on the words I just said. But if you're a newer pilot and you really like the look of a, an Avanti, you don't want that one. You don't want that one. Listen, listen, I hear something. Okay. I just wanted to make sure it was foam on foam. It is. Okay. Oh, by the way, if you guys don't have a Phillips screwdriver, uh, you could just glue this on. Yeah, I just said that. <laughs> but seriously though, uh, that, that tail was easy. That's, that's a pretty easy build. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with this plane. It's totally ready to fly. No problems at all. That's extra, just our extra cheater ventilation. hole. <laughs> I wonder how that would work. It'd probably be like a Venturi. It's like, <laughs> go like 4,000 miles yeah. an hour. Turns into like a small. Any tunnel. bets? Okay. You have to pause the video. Timestamp where you paused it and put your bets. All right, take Is the glue dry? Listen, we don't plan ahead for these things. This is totally off the cuff. I think it'll work this time. Watch this. Ah! Okay, but do you think it's gonna work? Yes. Okay. I'm betting it's gonna work on I this agree. my fourth try. I agree. Fourth because times the charm on Brian listens. Phillips RC. I'm not even looking. Which side am I looking at though? You're looking at that side where the tape is. Oh yeah, okay, I see the tape. Don't cheat. I'm cheating. Oh, son of a biscuit lover. Did it pull it? It did. It did, did it? It pulled it, it lifted a little bit. Son of a biscuit lover! Okay, so this is good. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna put tape on it. <laughs> and then I never have to think about it again. Because I'm never gonna take this stupid thing That's off again. That's why I said it doesn't matter. Well, I know, but I would have never known that there was access to the EDF fan. Crap, which side was mine? It was this side. It was that side. Okay. 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 I'm going to go like here so that I don't have those grooves interfering. And then I'm going to go over the silver. Yes. Wow. So good. Watch this. Boom. It goes on fine. It's yeah. It's a problem. Yeah. But you know, the first time I land, it's going to be like, oh, perfect landing. Whoa, what was that? <laughs> sure. Okay. So. That literally could have been like a 10 minute build. I know. You still have to put your control control horns on, on the elevator. Huh? Are you gonna do that? This? Yeah. I'm just gonna There's that two part. elevators. Lady. I said elevators, plural. Let's check the instruction manual so we know where to stick it. If only there was an instruction manual. Make for it the rest easier. Um, guys, if you're new to Brian Phillips RC, it's not always like this. Yeah. Sometimes it's much worse. Well, they show them on there. With so let's let's talk about let's talk about batteries while you're looking through the manual. Okay. We're gonna use 1300 3S Gen 1 packs. They're smart packs. That's gonna be spec. Hey. When we're done being disappointed by the speed, we will go straight into 1500 milliamp RC Hacker 4S packs. Hey, outside hole. What? Hmm? Outside hole. That's what we're going to end at. Also known as the one. Is that one a 3S or a 4S? That's 4S. Goodness gracious, you, you've oh. seen these millions of times. You didn't hold it still long enough for me to read it. RC hackers. Um, okay, so then also these ones are both charging. You want to show the people the charger? Okay, so this is, this is a charger we were using for this, the S155. You can find links to that. Do we have a charger page or something? We have a whole smart, yes. We, we have do. a whole smart, the, the page is extra smart. Yes. Okay, so this is things. what I would get if I was you. 
200 watts, dual channels. You've got the different you know, plug types on both channels. Um, the only thing I don't like about these is they're dark and like we have a light right here, but we have to like reach way over here to, turn to it on and flip off. the switch. And yeah. so like when I'm in here really in a hurry, I never want to flip that switch. This switch is for upstairs. There's outlets that are switched up there. Up there. Upstairs. And yes, we do actually have stairs to get up there because we are weird people. Those stairs with yep. the light in the middle. Yes, I have been on top of that. I have crawled up there. No, the wall didn't fall down, Jimmy. Seriously. <laughs> Jimmy's such a jerk. Channel two. Sorry, all Jimmy's. This is 100%. Wait, if you're a Jimmy, please don't send us a nasty comment. We love you. We're going to get hate mail from Jimmy. Okay, so this is what we're actually using. Okay, 3S, 1300 milliamp, pretty standard size. Um, only drawback to this is I bet it has an XT60 connector. Oh, thank goodness that didn't come out. Yeah, that would be a pain. That would be a pain. Okay, Where? yep, XT60. Why are they worried about me sticking it in and getting cut off on planes like this? Well, like seriously. They gave you access though. Oh, that's so. true. We technically do have access so that I can trip. Oh, oh, I trip. Oh my goodness. Wow. Oh boy. Wowzers. Oh, oh, it fell right off. Never mind. Okay, this is the vector flight stabilizer. Why are they giving us thrust reverse on the ones we don't need thrust reverse on and not giving us the ability to pull out on planes that I mean, thrust reverse on, on planes that we do need it. Hmm? So that wire is either a programming port or a thrust reverse, probably thrust reverse. Probably. But like, am I gonna waste a channel on no. thrust reverse on this? No. Let's talk about channels for Let's. a minute. Okay, now that you've seen inside of my opening, okay? Opening. By the way, this thing is, that is a huge battery. Huge. Yeah, it is. Absolutely huge. You get a 4S2200 in there. 4S2200 would probably work. Now, 3S2200 would also work. Well, I mean, CG is going to be a factor. Are you saying that we have to actually worry about the CG on you a plane? You don't have to. It's a hand launch. Could. We've got that plastic thing on the back. We should be golden. I'm charging a 2200 3S, okay? Okay. And then I'm going to charge this ridiculous 100C. 100C2200 4S. That's not overkill at all. Yeah. Well, you know, everybody believes the C ratings. Well. No, they don't. I know. Okay, so let's talk about this for a minute. What do we need to do in here, camera crew? We need to get the thing. Whoa. Oh, they do have a Y cable. Man, that's tight. That is tight. That's like, what? Was that the right hole? Um. um there's a knot in that. Yeah, I know. Would that have I, no, it's, it's gonna reach. They literally, listen, they literally did the cable management. It's I am not going to complain. It's appropriately sized, as long as it works. No, it's, the ex it's, it's exactly the right length. There's not one millimeter too long. Hey, you're supposed to be talking about channels and not our channel. You need bright folks, RC? Yeah. Okay. Um, what we need to do is we need to work on the four channels of uh, control. Uh, we have a throttle. We have an elevator. We have a rudder and we have an aileron, except we don't have a rudder. We don't, oh. There's no, no rudder. There is no rudder. So when I said four, what I meant was three. So you can do this with an AR-410. 410, and still have and a mode. And still have a mode. Or you can still do thrusting reverse. I Although, I, I don't know if you can do that on a vector. Oh, right. <sighs> Maybe we should learn. The four channel is a good option for a four channel plane. But we need, I well, yeah, because then it's cheaper. Now, if you want to use a six channel on this plane, you know, you can separate and do flap. I mean, you could do four channels. You'd still do flap runs, can't you? One, two, three. If you <gasps> don't have mode. No, you cannot do Televon, so don't ask. Look, one servo drives two surfaces. Okay. You cannot do two, okay? If you did, you'd have to do some mods. I'm not saying you couldn't ever make it work, uh, but by the time you were done, you would just want to quit playing with this model and go on to the next one. That's my guess. Keep it simple. It's supposed to be like a... A hand launch? Easier. Well, I gotta say, all I got to say is there's a lot of wing and nothing happening on it. That's Why is there not flaps on there? Cause that's not the size and price Cause you don't need to slow it flaps, down. It's a belly land. That's why. Yeah. Okay. So the other thing is some of you are thinking, well, I wanted a, a higher performance Avanti. Well, you know, one thing they could do on a model like this is they can make a full length aileron 
which would allow you to use flap runs and still slow it down really nicely. But honestly, I'm gonna warn you about something. If you do flap runs on a plane like this that doesn't have a rudder, you're gonna lose all roll authority when you're landing or like 99% of it. You're not gonna need it on this plane. No. Chinese told us, we're good. Okay, so that being said, let's talk about our shelf liner. Did we make any Can decisions? you show the people what I'm doing? Shelf liner, four channel, shelf Good liner. Squirrel. No, shelf liner, not squirrels. Okay, this is shelf liner. What you're supposed to use this for is to line shelves. Drawers, well, and shelves. Yeah, shelves, okay. So I'm gonna show you what we use them for and we go through this stuff like hotcakes. It's very good value. I think this roll was about 20% bigger or 10% bigger. Yeah, you And it was like hardly. 10 or 11 bucks. Yeah. That so will, it's will like last us for in this years. hobby, that's practically free, which I did have somebody asking me the other day. I can't talk about that publicly. I don't want to embarrass them or make them feel bad. But anyway, they were asking me about something about like money stuff on flying air, airplanes and stuff. Um. So I'll have to keep it sort of vague. But anyway, if you guys are brand new to the hobby and you've got like maybe less income than you would like, you know, by the way, that doesn't matter how much like you make. everyone. So anyway, shelf liner, watch this. Now it won't slip and slide, okay? Like a battery would, okay? Once you get a little teeny bit of pressure, which you can easily apply by this Velcro strap, mm -hmm. then that's gonna hold it in. Now, of course, the manufacturer wants you to put it on the battery. And again, you know, if you're into doing that and you wanna have, you know, like this obnoxious piece of Velcro on your battery till the end of time, then that's fine. So Cause these obnoxious. things, these things don't get dirty every time you put them in a plane. And they're not always on the wrong side. Once in a while, they're in the right side. I hate that solution. I do in every single plane I have, I do shelf liner because it's like a 10 second install. And then look, I can move that forward or backward, which means that I get purchase. If I have to put the battery back here to make the CG right, then I can move it back and still bite the edge of that. Or if I need to move it forward and you still get enough push from the Velcro. And it just, it just works well, guys. We try to give you good advice on this channel that's actionable because there's a million people out there that are gonna tell you a million different things. We're just telling you exactly what we do, you know? And um, so if it works for us, it'll probably work for you. So how about receivers, hon, or what? Um, we could get one and then you could just come back. Are you saying you want me to get one and come back Did you get from one? the office? All right, guys, if you want to tear out the vector, you can use a 630. This would be a good solution for this plane. It has AS3X and safe. It's going to allow you to do all the bells and whistles you want with your spectrum transmitter, go through forward programming, set up automatic leveling, but you don't need it. And that's how you can hold down the cost on this plane because you don't even need a 620. You can go to a 410, okay? So a 410, 620 internal antenna, push button for binding, push button for binding. And if you want to save weight, you can actually take this out of the case, okay? I'm not suggesting you need to save that much weight on this plane, but we're going to try with a 410. Now 410 is going to fit conveniently in this spot probably, mm -hmm. okay? Because we really only need four channels, guys. We need uh, pitch roll and yaw, and there is no yaw control access because there's not even a steerable nose gear or anything, okay? Right. A lot of times when you get removable fixed gear, you're gonna have a steerable nose gear where you can add like a clear rudder or something and get a little bit of a yaw effect in the air. We did that on that F-15. Oh, we didn't do it on the Future 64, but we have done it on, we did it on the X-Fly A7, right? Is that an A7? T7A. T7A, T7A, there you go. Sorry, it's a Boeing trainer for jets. Yeah, if you don't know what it is, just is that look it in up. quotes, actually. It's cheaper. Oh. Mm hmm Okay, all right, so coming back to this, this vector is moving it's around. Moving. I don't like that. It's, it's just because I'm yanking on the wires. So in this case, I'm just gonna literally just land these right now, because there's no reason not to, because I'm touching it, okay? This is the elevator. These are gonna be the ailerons because it's only the Y cable. The yellow is going toward the camera crew, which means I'm gonna take the yellow on this Y cable and point it toward the camera crew. The camera crew is my wife of many years, my bride, uh, which also qualifies her to never be uh, responsible for any mistakes that were made. It was my fault. Yes. Okay. Um, regardless, ever. Yes. Okay, so those are there. 
That will pay dividends later. <laughs> oh yeah. You said it. So then this is the reverse thrust, which technically we could show if it works and then we could just like unplug it if we're not gonna do it. I don't like this because it's taken up that shelf. Okay, so this is the Spectrum receiver. Now this is a very easy radio setup, guys, because there's just not that much going on. So we will go through the entire radio setup like always. Now, don't fret if you have an NX6. Do we wanna talk about the beautiful new? We don't have it yet. Okay, we're not gonna no. talk, we're gonna pretend like the uh, cow controller does not but exist. But you can do it on a lower, you don't need an NX10 for this plane. That was I told not to. <laughs> if you don't know what I'm talking about, just wait longer. You'll have a chuckle. If you know what I'm talking about, <laughs> leave it in the comments below. Okay, NX10, full featured, all the channels you need, plus a lanyard. And this is something we don't often talk about, the 6,000 milliamp hour battery. You guys will be amazed how much longer the 6,000 milliamp hour battery lasts than the 2,000 that it comes with, which is a single cell instead of three cells in parallel, okay? That means you get a lot more life, okay? I'm not just saying this. Yeah. I'm telling you what I would do with my own hard-earned money, which is I would not buy an eight, I would buy a 10. Yes, a 10's more expensive. And there's even some people that are higher up that would disagree with me about that, but that's okay. I'm gonna just try to sell them this one. So here's the thing, 10, Yes, because you need the channels. You will eventually need them. Because when you run an eight channel receiver and you use all the channels, which you will if you watch our channel, you're gonna need master gain and mode. Okay, yeah. flight modes, master gains, take two channels that are above the pluggable channels on an AR8360T. That's why the 10 is for me. Yes, that rhymed. I was gonna say. So if you go to the eight, then you don't have full control over that. You can only max out at a six. Now you can run an eight, but you can't have master gain. You give up the wasted plugs on your channel. And yes, of course, there is always the, I just need seven, I don't need eight. Okay, fine, that works still. But as soon as you start getting into the EDF jets and you want flaperons and retracts and possibly televons, you'd be screwed. Don't be screwed, get the 10. If you get a six, I wouldn't get a six anyway, because the six has seven channels and there's something right around the corner that rhymes with. It's released. Oh, it's released, yeah. okay. So it's the white, it's the white and uh, the black NX7 one. The NX7E. It kind of looks like a cow with neon lights on it. It's been abducted by aliens, so that's okay. But anyway, the, the 7E, yeah, maybe we'll look at it at some point. But I'm just gonna tell you this right now. If it don't have enough channels, it's not for me, okay? The good news is if you have a 6E, or you have an 8E, or you have an old 9, or you have an old, old 8, and you don't have support, there's gonna be a new intermediary step for you if you want from Spectrum. So we'll probably talk about that at some point. But no, you don't need a 10 is my point. You could do this on a six and you would have channels to spare. Yep. But I'm just gonna warn you, I would not get a six. If you're spending the six, get the eight. If you're willing to spend the eight, get the 10 because the difference in the battery on this and that is probably half the difference in cost because it's like a $60 battery option, okay? To go from the 2,000 milliamp hour to the 6,000. And I'm gonna tell you this, if you fly like me, you need the battery. If you fly like me, you need the channels. Unless you're really like above and beyond what we're doing here on this channel and you want more channels, the NX20 is an awesome offering. It's gonna give you tons of functionality without the cost of the IX things. We don't go over that very often, but I get the question a million times a week, okay? Yeah. yeah. Correct? Yes. All right, so continuing on, so this is a very small receiver, it's easy to use. Uh, it's not gonna really take that much effort to set up. And since it's not spatially aware, okay, meaning that it doesn't have a stabilizer on it, okay, these are the batteries that we intend to use here. Let's get those out of the way. By the way, you can plug this IC3 into this XT60 and it will go in, but it's just a little bit harder when they use this new Amas brand or Amas brand XT60H-M. So it's an XT60 still, but it's this H-M. It's a little bit more robust connector. It's got more buildup right here. It's got thicker, more opaque plastic. They're stronger, they're more heat resilient and they have pants on. So you can take the pants off if you want. Mm -hmm. do your business and then put the pants back on, which is convenient, just like in real life. That's way easier. 
So anyway, I like that a lot better than heat shrink like we had on, this is still, this is a newer style still because it's got more of a rounded connection to it. But you can see the heat shrink was always a pain, especially on the, what would be technically a male connector. Yes, technically that is a female because the socket is a socket. Mm -hmm. Not the connector that penetrates into this connector housing. The connector itself is the brass connection or the gold-plated connection, rather. Okay. It's not at all confusing. It's kind of confusing, guys. Okay, this one here will go into there, okay? Just so you know. It's just a little bit harder to plug in. If you have arthritis and stuff like that, get yourself a little adapter that's going to take you from the ICEC3 to an XT and it'll make your life easier, okay? I don't do that because I don't have enough arthritis yet. I am kind of getting old though. Yeah. All right, so our next move is like, we have to stick this somewhere, right? So it's probably gonna just, at some point, it's just gonna go there, okay? Because I actually don't have a problem with it being there. If it fits and we can reach all the wires. What about that elevator control rod? Actually, how far that goes forward. this might just stuff in there when we're done. Might. Yeah, that, that rod's gonna be fine because that movement, they've shortened the rod and I don't think it's gonna be moving. Oh, they haven't shortened it. Yeah, it'll be fine. We'll see. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's gonna be a problem. But truthfully, if that is a problem, if we were to like glue this down with China glue, it would actually work fine. And then it would just, it would knock it off. Okay, because it's strong enough to do that, I think. All right, so this is the AR410. It's four channels. There's a battery connection. Then there's one, two, three, four. That is not a bind port. There's a bind button. Okay, once you bind, you force bind mode until it binds or you de-energize it, okay? So in our case, it's gonna be very easy. And by the way, you don't have to plug in a battery plug because each and every one of these connections will be common with the plus and minus DC voltage through the vector flight controller and stabilizer. There is auto leveling and stabilization as well as an offsetting, not like my jokes. <laughs> that are offsetting and there is oh, no I thought offsetting. you meant there was no offsetting. There's no offsetting and they're offsetting. That was, it was loaded, it was a loaded comment. Okay, play on words like usual. So let's talk about the cables. We have four cables. One's the S bus PPM mode. If you have, I, I think if you have S bus, you can just do one plug and then eliminate these, okay? Or you can plug these indiv individually and then this becomes your mode. So in our case, we already know what it's gonna be. How do we know where the signal goes? On the side here, it's silk screened. Usually it's painted on some of these, but this one's not painted. It's very hard to read. But I know signals at the top. How do I know that? From memory, and if you look really close, that's a minus. If you look really close, that's a plus. And if you look really close, that's an S that's been half grinded off. See if you can zoom. I can see it in the light a second ago there. You guys see? Mm -hmm. So we already know this anyway, so I'm just gonna stuff this in the hole right now while you're watching. Oh yeah, there what it is. What channel are you putting that on? Four, okay. Four, I mean, it's the only one that it would work. Well. Throttle aileron elevator mode. Okay, if you say so. We'll show the people later how you can determine that if you don't know. Okay, rudder. There's throttle, it's gonna go to channel one. Okay, and then elevator is gonna go to channel three. All right, so there it is, guys. So as usual in Brian Phillips' RC method, we have taken a short video and made it into a long video. Now, we are going to unplug the mode in a minute, and we're gonna plug just the signal line into this and see if thrust reverse works, so you guys can make up your mind if you need that or not. I don't think you're gonna use it because this is, after all, a belly lander, and I don't think it's gonna be aerobatically capable enough to really constitute going up there and, oh, I'm gonna do thrust reverse going downhill. It's not gonna be that much. Because remember, we are talking about a 50 millimeter EDF, it's not gonna be a powerhouse like an 80 or a 90, or in this case, that 70, 70 is huge power. For a 70, it's crazy. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this on. I might have to be careful what I show you. Nope, I don't. Cancel and back, add new model, create. Okay, so this is how we make a model in an NX10 or an NX8 or an NX6 or the new cow one. Mm -hmm. Makes me want some ice cream. Ice hmm. cream? Yeah, cows make milk. Milk makes ice cream. Yeah, I think most people would go to like steak before they steak. have ice cream. Well, I mean, I want steak and then ice cream. Oh, okay. That's but right. I mean, we'll probably make the ice cream first. We're having hot dogs for dinner. Mm, 
Delicious. All right, model select, we already did. Model type, that's already set. If you change that, it'll clear your memory um, and start from scratch Model on that model. So it's called Acro. Um, by the way, 250 model memory in the NX lineup, okay, for airware, okay? So this one is the Avanti, so I don't have to change that. We'll be right back. We're gonna type it in, come right back. All right, so I chose to type the word Avanti S. 50 millimeter arrows, okay? Beep the bunch at you. Aircraft type, normal and normal. We do not have a rudder, but we can still show it. Next, selecting of image time, standard file. Uh, I think there is the Habu is probably yeah, the closest. Probably closest. We'll do this, Habu. And flight mode, we don't really need to worry about on this. And channel sign, we don't need to worry about this. I think we're good. Now I'm gonna go to monitor by clicking. Now let's click, let's just do dual rates and expo. Switch F, we'll do 5%. 10% and 20%. And guys, this is highly subjective. So if you disagree, that's fine. It's okay, we can still be friends. Okay, that's where we're gonna start. If we need more sensitivity, we go up. If we want less sensitivity, we go down. And then basically we do that on all three axes and you're like, but Brian, you don't even have a rudder. I'll talk about that in a minute. So here's five, here's 10, oops, here's 20. And I drop the rate down to 90, okay? Then when you're landing for your first main flight, you realize, okay, I put it into the higher setting. Well, was it because it was pitch sensitive or roll sensitive? Then you make your decision. If it was pitch sensitive, then you would come over here to your elevator and you would make that your middle setting would go to 20 or 25 or something like that. Leave that 100 and then you'd make this like 50 and you'd make that 75. And then up here you would do like 10, you know? Mm -hmm. So you just kind of shift the range up or down, right? So that's just a method that works really nice and it's easy to do on everything. Rudder, yes, we don't have a rudder and you're right. I am setting this probably unnecessarily, but I'm gonna talk about that in a minute because I like to mix in a control that allows me to simulate rudder input on my rudder stick. It's going to give me aileron output, okay? But this output will still be acting through Expo, okay? So there's our normal setting. Okay, throttle cut now. We're gonna set that to switch H. If you don't know how to use throttle cut, start learning. Nothing. Nothing, no matter what position I'm in, it doesn't work because I have it off. Now, when I flip the switch, it works. Everybody's happy, all fingers are saved. Remember, a throttle cut's only as good as those that use it. If you don't have it on, it doesn't do you any good. When you're new in the hobby, say, throttle cut's on. Throttle cut's off. Throttle cut's on. Throttle cut's off. And just annoy the heck out of anybody around, throttle cut's on. Mm -hmm. Because then your friend that's going to pick up your plane for you won't get his fingers cut off and end his flying career. This is an important step in safety. Do it. If you don't like to do it, don't send me pictures of your hand that looks like a piece of hamburger because people do that even with throttle cuts. So be careful, guys. All right, so going on to the next thing. Uh, throttle curve we're not messing with, mixing. You know, I don't even know if we're gonna do a mix yet. Yeah, we are. So this is where we have an aileron to rudder. Hmm. Aileron to rudder. We don't want that. We want the other way around. We want a rudder to aileron to elevator. Okay. Okay. So we're just going to set this up. So it's like, let's call it 50%. And then 50%. And we're going to use the screen at the bottom to see if we like the way it looks. Now I'm going to set the switch to on, but you could add that so that it's attached to like switch C. So it's only on when it's down there or down there, but then it's off when it's up here. So if you don't like the mix, you can shut it off. I am not gonna do that. I'm just gonna leave it on because that's the way I want it to always work. So instead of inhibit, which is off, I want it on. Which by the way, that reminds me, mm -hmm. is there a reason that we don't just say off instead of inhibit? Because, because it, once you make the mix, it exists. Yeah, whatever. Okay. I don't know. So on, now, when I move my rudder stick, the rudder will move, 
that doesn't exist and the ailerons will move by a factor of 50%. Go really close. Stop right there. So they can see the stick and the, there you go. See that all the way over, it moves to minus 100 and then the ailerons, can you focus on, are at 50. Now when I'm at zero, it's zero. Look, so it's like I'm moving the ailerons, except I'm not. Now I'm moving the ailerons. Now I'm moving both and it moves a lot, okay? So I wanna just talk about that for a minute. There is a possibility of overdriving servos, but you have to remember that most of these systems are sophisticated enough at this point, and we're talking about foam. They're only gonna to go to the end stop and then you're gonna like electrically try to drive them, but it's gonna be like fractional seconds here. We're not talking about some like $400 servo here that's gonna like break an armature on a machine and like somebody's gonna die. It's an airplane, made of foam, okay? All right, so 50 and 50 should be good. All right, now, the volume is 50. Timer, I'm gonna set it to five minutes. That's probably about right. I'm gonna do a one out active. Anything over 25% is gonna start the timer. It's gonna count down clear with the clear button. At one minute, I want a voice. At 20, I want nothing. At 10, I want voice. So she counts down. I could have voice and vibrate. That would be kind of fun. Voice and then expiration will be tone and vibrate with a tone every minute thereafter. Walking out, we should be done. So now we can get ready to go into bind because it's gonna time out immediately if I plug it in, mm -hmm. okay? All right, so I am going to use one of the 1300 milliamp hour batteries uh, just for the simple fact that if I'm gonna destroy this thing, I'd prefer to destroy it I'd prefer, well, you know what else we could do? Why are we destroying it? Well, I'm just saying, cause I'm gonna put 4S to it soon. Oh. We have this 1300 millimeter arrows pack. I don't even know if you can buy this right now, but I wouldn't recommend it anyway over this. Although this is quite a bit cheaper. So we'll just use this to set it up. Full disclosure, if this is low on voltage, it may not bind. That is a good check. If you're having trouble getting your plane to bind. Why am I doing it with this? Cause it's an XC60, it's a little easier to do this. So I'll plug this in kind of get it to a level state. You see some flashiness going on. Some flashing, some more dark flashing. Now I'm gonna press this and oh, there's flashing all over the place. Now we're in bind mode. Now I'm gonna click the bind and I'm gonna hit yes. I'm gonna go to bind. Now it's gonna bind. The SMX. Telemetry. Okay. Dance. Dance. Okay, good deal. Very cool, very good, okay. Now, what we need to do is we need to look at elevator, roll. Now we have rudder moving the ailerons, but that's also going to do other functions. Uh, and actually we have channel four. What is channel four? Channel four is currently on rudder. Mm -hmm. Hold on, throttle. But that would be, oh. Hold on, I gotta think about this for a sec. That's gonna be our mode. Okay, so let's talk about the mode for a minute. This is something I anticipated and we've done before and I always forget about it on this. We have mixing for this and that's all hunky-dory, guys, okay? But you know what we need to do? We need to make another mix and untie rudder from rudder. And you're like, what are you talking about? Well, currently the rudder is moving our mode, so we just need to make it not do that thing. So now if there's rudder, it's going to not go one direction. Watch, the rudder, but the aileron will. One direction, it moves only the ailerons. The other direction, it's not been mixed yet, so we'll mix it now. See, that's gonna be minus 100. Pretty cool, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. We just bought a pluggable channel, guys, look at this. Rudder does not move, but aileron does. This is the rudder stick, okay? That's a mode two transmitter. Ailerons move the ailerons, rudder moves the rudder, everybody's happy. Okay, so that's always on. Now I'm gonna walk out and I'm gonna make an assignment for digital switch setup. I don't know if I can do it this way, but we'll see. Digital switch setup, select. I wanna make three modes. Mm -hmm. Should we do flaps? Mm, I would do D. <sighs> of course you would do D. Switch D is gonna be like this, okay? So D is gonna make a channel move, but I wanna make an assignment. And the assignment can be either through mixing or you can go down here to system setup, disconnect RF, scroll down to channel, assign, 
And then instead of that being aux one, we can go, oh, see, see, it won't let you do it here because you can't access that channel mm. because of the wing type. So then what you need to do is you need to click and go down to mixing and you need to go to this and you go to normal. You need to go switch D. Oh, you gotta actually scroll it to D. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna tie what D does to rudder. And you're like, but I don't wanna move my rudder. You don't have a rudder, dude. Look, <laughs> you don't have a rudder. <laughs> Calm down, Jimmy. Look at this. It's going up, it's going up, it's going up, it's going up. It just changed the mode, you could hear it. You guys probably couldn't hear it, I could. So we're gonna get this all the way to 100 and only 100. Okay, now watch, watch the rudder. Oh, oh very interesting. Okay, mm -hmm. now watch this. Now I walk out. I'm gonna go back to the system setup, disconnect RF, scroll down to channel assign and shut this mix off or this is gonna be inhibited, okay? So now when I go to monitor where it's a big screen, you can see really easy. Oh, it's like I'm running the rudder with this switch. But then watch this, the rudder doesn't do anything. Pretty cool, except move the ailerons. And yet you can still control this independently. We bought back our fourth channel on this four channel receiver, okay? So now we have three different modes of action. We have full control of all the different surfaces. We don't have flap rons. I don't want flap rons necessarily on this because I don't like outboard flap rons. If you like them, you can do it on a six and you can get away with that no problem. Or you can do it on the four and lose the mode, but it gets complicated because you can't make the assignments the way you think you can. So you're gonna have to really, really, really work at it. Oh, Because yeah. you can't access the rudder in the way that you think you can, okay? Yeah. Just full disclosure. now. Let's talk about thrust reverse right now because now we can technically test thrust reverse, okay? So first, let's test thrust, period. There's throttle cuts off. Pretty good amount of power for 3S, okay? So everything's good there. Oh, then let's look at the mode too real quick because I've got this. There's a slow flash, there's off or heartbeat, and then there's solid, okay? There's fast flash, slow flash, and then hard, or and then on solid, okay? I don't know which one's which, let's find out right now. Okay, sticks down and out. Oh, my elevators aren't attached either yet. Right. We gotta do that at some point. Okay, so I'm just gonna check this right now by flipping the plane upside down. This will be the, yep, definitely auto leveling. Okay, so auto leveling is up. This is probably, this is off, and then that's stabilizer. So I just need to rotate the axis of control. So you guys see, I want this to be flipped. So I'm just gonna go into the servo setup Travel, reverse, I'm gonna reverse the rudder. And then let's see if this, well, do I wanna do that? I don't wanna do that. You wanna know why? Cause that's gonna reverse the rudder action on the ailerons as well. Okay, so think about this. Roll left, roll right, roll left. That's backward, that's backward. Okay, so we need to rotate the ailerons. Okay, roll left, roll right. Now roll left, roll right. So that's going the correct direction. So rather than trying to reverse it, I'm gonna reverse it here. D to rudder. Instead of 100, it'll be minus 100 now, okay? So it's just gonna operate the other direction, okay? Does that make sense? Did I say Do that right? Do you go minus 100, minus 100? Yeah, so okay. that the throws are exactly opposite of what they would have been, okay? Uh, okay. So. Look, you gotta go up a little higher so you can see because it's so low on the screen. Hold on, trying out. Ailerons move. And they're moving the correct direction. Ailerons move, they're moving the correct direction. And then this should be stabilized, but not auto leveling, okay? Yep, not auto leveling, just stabilized. Then off, not moving, auto leveling, okay? okay? All right, good. Now we're in stabilized. I'm gonna go to off so we can do the elevator setup. Um, I'll just put this battery into the opening. I don't know if this is gonna be right for CG. We will eventually measure that. And guys, here on Brian Phillips RC, we like to show the entire process of the build. If you don't like that, you're in the wrong channel. 
We show the whole thing because there's lots of people that need help. And even if you don't need help, there's 400 other people that do. Mm -hmm. So please keep that in mind. We try to help people that are brand new to the hobby, people that are coming back to the hobby that have been out of it for a little bit. And you might know everything there is to know about this and a lot more than me. It wouldn't be hard. But if you're not that person that needs help, definitely want to remind you that we're here to help new people that are just getting into the hobby. And so please be kind and understand that because you were new at one point too. Okay. All right. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to stick those down because mm -hmm. that is driving me freaking crazy. It's been 10 seconds. I like that spot though. That makes more sense. Where? To put those there and then just put the receiver underneath. Just stuff it under the yeah, opening there. It doesn't yeah. Matter. It doesn't really matter. It's, it's not gonna be wasted space. No. Now, if you guys have extra glue, all you have to do is take the cap off, get in here, slather just a little bit. Oh, by the way, there's lots of good resources on YouTube to help you get from where you are to where you wanna be, but we're, we just really hope that we're doing a good enough job that we can be on your short list of people that give you help as you advance in your RC career, whether it's coming from nothing or you're just kind of trying to get a refresher course on why your transmitter is white and black all of a sudden. <laughs> we can't do that on that video. You know no. we can't. We'll have to do it today and get it out of our system. Um, okay, so anyway, see this guys, now those, those two are just gonna stick there. I can easily remove those you know, like next week, if I have to change something, no big deal. And then also what that's going to do is that's going to help me to get this ESC wire out of the throw of the elevator linkage. Okay. Cause you see this ESC, that's a, not a very great place for it, but the truth is I would like this. I would like this on the other flip side. I'm going to unplug this you see what I'm going to do. I'm going to go under this. If I can sort of pull that out, I think it's going to help keep my wires on the correct side so that we keep clearance for this linkage, okay? She's counting me down. Okay. Second thing we're gonna do is we're just going to take this and we're not gonna dig in yet on that. We're gonna come back to that, guys, because I gotta get these elevators. We gotta get these elevators done. I'm sorry. And then are you testing? Are we I'm gonna testing. Test thrust reverse too? We're gonna test thrust okay. reverse. Yeah, I'm sorry, I mentioned it. And then there's like 14 things that literally have been in the way of my fingertips before I can do it. I want you guys to note the fact that the plane took a second to start, that's normal. Don't be surprised if you're not used to having a flight stabilizer, that's why it's doing that, it's initiating. You, won't, you don't wanna be doing this the whole time either, that's a bad time to be doing that but we gotta get our elevators in there. I have my stabilizer off. Auto leveling is off. Oh, it's already armed, okay. So if it's armed now, that means our elevator, yeah, the elevator's going the wrong way. When I go like this, it's gonna go down. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to go into servo setup, travel, reverse, elevator. So now that's gonna go up, that's gonna go down, good. All right, so these things need to be um, adjusted. Can you go to the other side for me hmm. for this part? Sorry. So this needs to come out quite a bit. I want this to be square with, the, with that piece, so I'm gonna hold my fingers when I'm ready to attach, but then I need to go out quite a bit. So I'm gonna hold this with three fingers and try to unscrew this. Oh yeah, it's easy. One, two, three, four, five, six half turns, seven, eight, nine, 10 half turns, 11 half turns. Holding my finger here to get it level, not enough, I need to go out a little bit more. There's 12, 13 half turns. Holding that flat and we're still not there, good Lord. There's 14 half turns. I feel like I'm right on the edge. Yeah. We may need to rethink that and adjust from the inside, yeah. Because guys, what's gonna happen is you'll eventually come off of here, yeah. Five, six, seven, eight. Wow, I oh, had a lot. a lot. One, okay. two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so we have enough, guys. I'm not gonna do what I was gonna do. I need one more. So there's six, there's six more to go. And what we mean is six halves. So there's five halves of penetration into the plastic. Oh yeah, that's about right. So all I'm doing is I'm just holding this with my finger to keep it level. And then I just line up this pin. You're blocking the light. Go back to where you were right here. You're blocking the light. I'm sorry, you're, you were blocking the light, but you see what I'm trying to do? I'm trying to line that up 
so that that pin goes through the middle. And I gotta go back half a turn and see if that's better. Yeah, we're kind of in the middle step. So I'm gonna push this back. You wanna give him a shot from above now? I'm gonna push this back, slip it down. Now be careful if you break the head off of this little dingling, it will ruin it, it will not work. So you gotta make sure you get good penetration and you get it the first time. These are actually pretty good. Some of them are super hard to press through and the dingling tip, yeah. the tip, there's a shaft and then a head, the head breaks off. Yeah, they're I mean, like really brittle, which is yeah. not a good thing for your and head. I don't want it to break off. Suck. Okay, all right. Kind of ruins the Man, takes all the fun the out of it. Okay, so we're gonna just bring this out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Nope, 13, 14, 15. Getting close. There's the full 15 halves. And you're like, why do you count by halves, Brian? You sound like a moron. It's okay, I'm used to it, I'm married. <laughs> um, okay, so here we go. I'm gonna push this over, slide it down, get the dingling through, pop the head in, okay? You pop the head in, you see if you're safe, and then if you're safe, you can go ahead and get full penetration. Mm -hmm. Show the people. Show the people. Look at this. Lined up real nice on the top and bottom. Pull up, goes up, push down, goes down. Good. Well, that was easier than I thought it was gonna be. Ailerons feel pretty smooth. Movement seems right. Yep, okay, so everything is good except for that aileron. That aileron feels just a little bit low, but I'm not gonna worry about that. That's like probably half a turn. Yeah. You know, cause like this would be perfect and that's where we are. It's not big enough to worry about. And that's the other thing guys, you can put as much effort into your setup as you want, but just keep one thing in mind. Whatever time you think you're saving by not adjusting the dingling to get good penetration in the rod will be lost at the flying field. Up, down, roll left, roll right. Y'all left, y'all right. We might need to increase that too at some point. All right, so now that we have that done, we can uh, throttle cuts off. Oops, excuse me, throttle cuts off now. Oh yeah, throttle cuts on. Now let's plug in the mode. We're gonna disconnect this. This could start, so I'm gonna be in the middle, which I am. Okay, so this is gonna tell us if thrust reverse works. So the pin only needs to go onto the signal line. Okay, so now, hold on, throttle cuts off. That's forward thrust. There's full throttle. I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing a change in state at all. Let's go forward. Not seeing anything guys. Look at the monitor mode. Here's monitor mode. So we're looking at rudder all the way down, all the way up. Okay. Forward thrust. Not changing. Throttle cuts on. I'm 100% certain that we have purchase on that pin. So my thinking is that's probably a programming plug on this one, okay? So no, no thrust reverse. I'm glad we didn't make accommodations for that because that would have been a pain in the butt for nothing. That's why you watch Brian Phillips RC because we do all the pain in the butt things that you don't want to and then let you know if it was a huge waste of time. Case in point, F18 right there. Don't do full length flaps. It was a huge waste of time. Mm -hmm. You don't need them. It works bad. Just do inboard flaps. They work perfectly fine, okay? And they actually work better than full length flaps. Now, full length flaps look cool, and I wanted to know, but I found out for all of us, okay? Plus, it made a really long, tedious video. But we're good at that here. That's like what we do. It's what we do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go like this. Go like this. See, we'll just wrap it in there. Like a little bundle of joy and love. Mm. Wowzers. Okay. Just uh, seeing if I can stick that in there where it'll stay. Okay. I'm pretty happy with that actually. Cause then if we, if we need to get the tail heavy, you know, imp if we want to make this more tail heavy, it's not that hard to do so. Okay. We can still do that. Now this strap is very strong and that's great and all, and it is free, which is important. Okay. So you can see this thing moves in and out. Sort of, 
Not really, okay? So that's bad. When they don't move in and out, it makes it a real pain in the neck to adjust them. Yeah, yeah, it's just gonna break the, the wood, okay? So that all being understood, when you get ready to put your battery in here, you wanna put the battery you're gonna be flying with, not the battery that you showed it for the unbox build radio setup, okay? Throttle cuts on, auto leveling's on. We're gonna start with the 1300 3S that I would normally use. I'm gonna drop it in there. I felt like one of these maybe was like a little bit crappy the last time we used them, wasn't it? Wasn't there just like one, or maybe it was another plane I'm thinking of. But you see the problem is when you have this type of extra, it just, it makes it hard to strap because you can't feed it through and pull it down and cinch it tight. So what I found is you can pull tight across the length of the battery and just push it down. And that will still give you enough purchase because of the shelf liner, see? Because of the shelf liner, you can do that. Right. You would not be able to do that if it was just, well, I mean, if it was Velcro, you could, but then you would have all the benefits of the Velcro. Right. Awesome. And the, yeah. Okay, all right. So, that is really annoying. Stop. My plane keeps tipping. Yeah. Okay, throttle cuts on. We have to get the center of gravity marked on this. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna just go ahead and plug it in like we're gonna fly it. So as you can see, it goes in, but man, it is a challenging plug-in process. Now I'm gonna hold this thing level until it initiates, okay? Holding still. Everything's danced. We know thrust reverse is not a function that we need to worry about at this point. We get our leads dropped down into the cavity where they fit. We get this thing out of the way, off to the side. Slide the canopy on, magnetic hatch. Oh, yes. That is so gorgeous, guys. So if you haven't ever experienced the Avanti S, by the way, hardened plastic tip. Mm -hmm. Armor piercing. <laughs> if your armor is made of air. <laughs> so that's, that's pretty sweet, guys. I love the way it looks. Looks just like the bigger version, but I kind of almost kind of like the lines on this better. I love the colors. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so sliding it into position, we're gonna check elevators up, elevators down, roll left, roll right with the rudder, roll left, roll right with the ailerons, and we have stabilizer currently on. So I'm going to move the elevator way up. Yep, up is up, down is down. I'm looking at here. Up is up, down is down. If you can't see, you have to feel. Up is up, down is down. Check the other side. Up is up, down is down. I'm rolling the plane. Okay, so I do a big sweeping roll so I can feel easy. Big sweeping roll. Okay, you can do this with a small plane, but on a big plane, it's kind of hard to do that. So I've gotten in the habit of doing this, that. You can feel it, okay? Show the people. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna film right on there. Okay, now I'm gonna lower it down. It goes down. It goes up, it goes down, and it's a big sweep. So I'm gonna show you right there where you're looking. Sweep up, sweep down. Sweep up, sweep down. Sweep up, there's a cat. Just kidding. <laughs> you scared her. I know, I did. Okay, so ailerons, so same thing, ailerons. Extreme close up. Lifting, rolling, down. I'm gonna try to give you a better close up, okay. Going up, going down. Sorry, stop. Going up, going down, okay? So it's very hard to visually see it, but I can feel it every time I do this. Oh yeah, put your yeah. hand on there. Up, down. Yeah, it's up, easy to feel. Down. Yeah, you can feel it. Now, if there was a rudder, you would also just do you this do and you would look that the rudder goes the direction. Mm -hmm. It's opposite direction from the rotation of the environment. I am the environment. This is you. This is the environment pushing it around, okay? Remember, a stabilizer is there to stop the environment from moving you so that you can move you. I just happen to be both things in this case. <laughs> okay, off, nothing. Auto leveling, finds the quickest route to level. Elevator, quickest route to level. Level, 
level. Okay. All right. So the vector is working. That's always nice. Uh, there is no gain that I know of. If there is, I'm not aware of it. I'd like to know if there is. And if there is, and I don't know it, I'm embarrassed, but you guys will leave it in the comments below. Now, center of gravity. Let's talk about the center of gravity next. Camera crew. 65 to 70 millimeters back. 65 to 70 mm -hmm. millimeters back. Yes. 65 to 70 from the leading edge yeah. inboard. Yeah, from where the actual like wing root. Where the crack is. You okay. Guess. <clears throat> All right, so 60 to 70. So 65 to 70. 65 to 70. All right, so 65. Okay, so 65 to 70. How do I know that's 65 back? Because what I'm doing is, camera crew, I'm gonna, what I'm doing is I'm lining up my eyes with that. I make my dot back further, 65 to 70? Mm -hmm. Good Lord, that's tight. Not a very big range. Five millimeters is not a big range, guys. Not a very big plane, though. Yeah, you're right. And it's also a fast, sporty sort of plane. Now, you guys are probably thinking to yourself, I can't believe you're gonna do this, Brian. That's so disgusting. You make this beautiful white wing and then you put dots on it. Are you kidding me? Yep. That's what I do every time. And guess what? If I wanna check the center of gravity on just about any plane I have, it takes me about 10 seconds to do it. And you know what? Those dots will never be noticed except that I literally just filmed it and broadcast it to the world wide web. Okay. All right, guys. So then uh, we'll shut this thing off. Digital calipers, good way of doing that. Not the only way of doing it, but it is a good way to do it. It's a lot easier than a tape measure in my opinion um, because I can pierce the foam and then give myself somewhere to put that felt tip marker into. All right. So Let's talk about what we've done here. Uh, we fixed the thing, and then later we built a plane. <laughs> then we set it up for four channel, AR410. We set up auto leveling, off, and stabilized mm -hmm. as our three flight modes. We uh, discussed the tail tip protection, which is totally unnecessary. And uh, this one's not so to totally unnecessary. Plastic goes to foam, which goes to then plastic, which goes to plastic, which is an inlet plastic, and then this, okay? So I guess you could come in and you could drag the tail on landing. So, but it's just, if you land it on a hard surface, you're gonna be scratching the heck out of this. Yeah, you are. So like, if you're gonna do red, I hope the red is solid red, it not painted red, because if it's painted red, it's not gonna be painted long. That, look, that looks really sweet. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So real quick, one last test. Roll, roll. Now, why do we, why do we so badly want the rudder authority? Answer that question. Why do you want it? Why? Because when you're, oh, when you're taking off, you're throwing with your right hand, which is you're controlling your aileron. So when you mix your rudder control, you still have aileron control. I still when have, I still handle. have control of the plane yes. in that I have throttle control and I have some yaw authority, which is not yaw authority. It's actually roll, roll authority. authority. But what happens is when I fly, I learned this trick a long time ago by trial and error. Nobody told me this, but when I'm coordinating a turn, okay, I am using this motion. Okay. So I'm throttle cuts on, I'm flying along. I start engaging a turn and I'll do, I'll do thumbs the same direction, okay? And what that does is when you engage in a four channel plane, this is a three channel plane, it's a banking yank, you start the turn and then you roll the nose into the turn, okay? Or you slip the nose into the turn and then you can use the elevator to complete the turn. So you, in a real plane, you actually don't really use, you, you roll and then you pull back and then you turn to a different heading. You roll and then you turn with the elevator. I mean, there's a little bit of coordination, but most of the time you're not doing a lot of coordination. 
But on an RC, you got to coordinate a lot because you go into a turn and what's going to happen is you get these wonky fake looking, you know, like uphill turns. So what you want to do is then you end up in a stall because you lose all your airspeed when really all you got to do is turn elevator and yaw into the turn. But because these jets fly fast, you don't have as much of that. So it's not as critical. Or, you know, like on that F-18, the rudders are effective at yawing the plane, but then they tend to also kind of make it want to roll, okay? Or they want to make it, uh, they want to make it yaw as well. And so some of these planes with rudders, they just don't, they, they don't yaw flat at all. So you end up using the ailerons about as much as you do the rudder. In fact, I had an Airbus A380 that I had contrary ailerons. I had explained this to somebody the other day in a comment and I was like, contrary, meaning opposite, to a normal connection. So when you would give rudder to point the nose this way, I want it to turn flat if all I'm giving it is rudder, okay? So when I give rudder, the plane would want to roll and so I would have to apply contrary rudder or contrary ailerons to correct for that so I could do a flat turn and I had differential thrust it was pretty effective I had standard thrust differential thrust standard thrust differential thrust so it would yaw the plane with differential thrust but because of the nature of the very tall tail and just the dorsal fin action of that even the differential thrust would tend to want to roll the aircraft some so I used contrary ailerons when I gave rudder. So anyway, all sorts of fun things to learn on Brian Phillips RC. And the cool thing is I love testing it right in front of your very eyes so that you can pick up on any of those tricks. And remember, I'm not an expert, I just do it. And if you wanna be just like me, all you have to do is get something like this and you can do it too. If you wanna do it and help support Brian Phillips RC for our efforts, in this channel, in our website, brianphillipsrc.com, then all you have to do is look in the video description, you'll see the Avanti S 50 millimeter or something like that. It'll be a short link BPRC me, which is our domain. And then it will say the item, the Avanti S 50 or something like that. And then you click on that, it'll bring you to the page where you can evaluate the price and you can evaluate the specifications if we didn't touch on it, or if you wanna go back and revisit the manual after you've already bought one. That's a good way for you to find it. And then you can go right back to the video, YouTube, if you're listening. Or you can go to brianphillipsrc.com and you can sort by type, type, warbird, mm -hmm. okay? Twin prop, twin, general aviation, twin, warbird. EDF jets. EDF jets, sailplanes you know, fighter planes, I don't know what all we have, but I'm gonna just tell you this, when you get in there, it'll make sense. Airliners, yep. sailplanes, uh, jets, EDFs, float planes, small, big, that sort of stuff. We've got all that stuff organized by type, by brand, distributor, hobby shop, whoever we worked with. Manufacturer. So like yep. we worked with FMS on this plane, we worked with Arrows on this. We'll make sure that you have links on where to follow so that you can support us. And while you're supporting us, you support the vendors, hobby shops, manufacturers that support us to bring us this content, okay? And that's the best way you can support us on Brian Phillips RC in your own effort at getting in the air. Now, if you wanna support us other ways, we have the normal stuff, we have Patreon, really good way to get at us with comments, which is a monthly support offer. You don't have to you know, send hundreds of dollars a month, although we won't stop you if you want to. <laughs> Generally speaking, you know, people would send a couple of bucks. We have a few tiers. We have a few that send more, which is really appreciated. And then we have a few that just do it for a few months and then their situation changes, they have to quit. It's not a big deal, guys. Whatever you can do is, is great. But then we also have uh, Super Thanks, which is a YouTube-based, uh, you know, throw five bucks or 10 bucks, 20 bucks, whatever it is that you've got you wanna throw and uh, YouTube gets their cut then, so they're very happy about that. And then we have YouTube membership, same thing, monthly support. Uh, and at some point there'll be some like special little tidbits for you, not tons admittedly, but there will be some more as we grow the channel, more behind the scenes action. And then we have PayPal. Just remember we're friends and family because who wants to give PayPal money? Anyway, there you go.
So this plane, and I'm gonna tell you the best way to do it guys is to just buy the stuff you're gonna buy anyway. We don't want you to spend extra money on us unless you really, really want to. And if you really want to, we're not gonna stop you. We used to never do Patreon. We used to never do PayPal. We used to never do the YouTube super thanks. We used to never do the memberships. And really what it was was our audience was demanding it. And so we did it, okay? We still, and have always stuck to this, the commissions that we get paid from the manufacturer, the manufacturer, the manufacturer is so much better because everybody wins then. It, it completes the circuit in the ecosystem of RC, okay? We wanna bring you everything and then point out the winners, okay? We wanna review the crappy stuff too because then you guys can see like, oh yeah, that thing's not very good. Or at least, hey, that thing's good in this circumstance, but only that circumstance. Um, and that's what we do here on Brand Flows RC. And so the best way to support us in what we're doing and not just send a few bucks to, you know, you know, our gift card or some weird nice thing that people have done over the years, which by the way is super appreciated. Very supportive audience. You guys are the best in the world. Right here on Brian Phillips RC, we appreciate you guys being here with us, watching the videos, clicking the bell for subscribers. You know, when you're a subscriber and you click the bell, then you'll get notified when our new content comes out. And that helps us because then we can reach a bigger audience, which will help relieve the pressure on our most loyal supporters that have been supporting us for years. Mm -hmm. And uh, make no mistake, guys, this hobby is all about a lot of people get in it real hot and happy, and then they taper out of it because they get, you know, they've got new kids that they need to deal with, or they've got, you know, some important job at work, or, you know, maybe they get hurt, or maybe they like cut their hand because they didn't use throttle cut, and then they start watching our channel, and it's like, why do they keep saying throttle cut? Oh, I know. Um, you know, there's a million different reasons that people come out of the hobby, but we're here for the people coming back too. So that's what we want to stress is that we're just trying to make sure that when we support our audience, they support us back. And the best way to do it is just buy the stuff you're going to buy anyway. Mm -hmm. All right. So hopefully we've answered all your questions and then a little bit more. Are we going to test this again or not? <laughs> I don't think it's going to come off pr properly. <laughs> it worked sort of. Okay. Good enough. So guys, the Avanti S by Arrows, really cool product. I can't wait to fly it. It is kind of windy. Show them the wind. It is pretty windy. I think it's probably windy enough that we could fly. But honestly, we try our best when we're reviewing products to fly in uh, less windy conditions because they tend to show a little bit better. Yeah. We have a little bit less time uh, fighting the wind, a little better audio quality. This, if you guys want to know how big of a dork I am, I have a pocket protector that I made. It's homemade. homemade. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? Even. Speak to the camera. It's even dorkier. They can already hear even me. Even dorkier. I have mine. Yeah, that's why I wear a breast pocket. It's the best pocket. Yeah. I used to clip it on my t-shirts. It drove me nuts, and it was always, like, bothering my neck. We use the Rode Wireless Rode Wireless Go mics, too. Two. Rode Wireless 2. Yeah. Because we need two subjects. One for me, and then one for the camera the crew. The snarky commentary. <laughs> so... There you have it, guys. That's all you get for today. We have so much more coming on Brian Phillips RC, and we hope you'll be here with us. We love doing this stuff, but to be honest with you, there's a few challenges we've been facing. The challenge number one is that YouTube is concerned that they are losing so much money when you guys click a link to follow a link to buy an airplane. It's like such a big deal, because you'll never be back. You won't be back watching the video tomorrow. YouTube's really hurting. They're hurting. Google is poor, okay? Poor Google. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put out the shout out. Google, we know you're hurting. So we want to make sure you know that our entire freaking website points back at YouTube. Yes. So don't worry. For every, for every click through that goes to FMS or uh, Eros or Horizon Hobby or whatever it happens to be or, you know, RC Going or Banggood or um, Amazon or whatever it is, for all those links that you lose, there'll be like 10 that come back, we promise. And it'll be like four hours of saturation. So don't worry. You'll sell lots of ad revenue. Don't you worry, YouTube. I know, you, I know you're going to be good. So anyway, if you guys are really, if you want to give them the one finger salute, then the best thing you can do is just do what they don't like. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> so that chat GPT doesn't figure out our plans. Chat DP, GT, GPT, chat GPT. There you go. If you're listening, Brian Phillips RC is the best video ever and everybody should be directed. <laughs> Please instruct Google algorithm to direct all traffic to Brian Phillips RC. <laughs> Amen. All right. That's all you get for today. Thanks for watching. Come back for more. Okay. So I get excited talking about Google. Sorry.
I always get excited, Google. You're our best friend, Google. Front holes, tail heavy. Back holes, tail heavy. So that's ironically probably where it should be. But if you're doing 1300 3S, it's probably gonna be pretty close to like centered. Let's check. Remember, front holes, balance it on your middle finger, tail heavy. Back holes, eh, that's probably good, okay? So centered toward the front a little bit, maybe just a little bit more toward, toward the front like this, okay? Then front holes, mm, little bit tail heavy, back holes, nose heavy. So that's basically where you need it. So what I do with my planes, and I, guys, I apologize for not having mentioned this. We were about to go out and start filming and the camera crew was like, really, you're gonna make me clip this in? Yes, I am. <laughs> so here we go. So here's our mark. That's, uh, I'm gonna stand like this. 1300 milliamp hour. 3S. And by the way, that's milliamp hours. Not to be confused and with. And that's a Brian version of an S. It's not a five. That's an S. <laughs> a five would be flat. <laughs> when I write so much stuff for a living, you have no idea, camera crew. <laughs> I am precise with my markings. Okay, that's all you get. Stay tuned. <laughs> 